M2 MacBook Air is extremely disappointing. It reached the first owners and I gotta tell you, <sighs> Apple, why are you doing so? Let me explain. MacBook Pro 13 with M2 chip came out around a month ago and Vadim and Max from Max Tech Channel did a ton of reviews and videos about slow SSD speeds in the base 256 gigs configuration. Because it only has one NAND chip, which basically means it's two times slower than even M1 MacBook Air, which is almost two years old now. And guess what? Base M2 Air has the same issue. Why is it even important, you might ask? Because with 8GB of unified memory, around 4 or 5 of which is used by macOS itself, you'll run out of memory pretty quickly and the system will have to use the SSD as RAM, it's called a swap memory. And if you have a fast SSD, the performance losses are not that big, but if you have the slow SSD, you can get up to 2 times slower export times while multitasking with 10 Chrome tabs open and 1 or 2 applications, I mean M2 is slower than even M1 in this case with 256 gigs base models. So if you plan on multitasking, which I guess 95% of users do, nobody sits there and wait for the render to finish, we browse the web and so on, and if you want to reach the full potential of M2 chip, you'll have to purchase at least 512 gigs model. And there is no excuse for Apple for doing this in 2022, considering that this SSD configuration these days would cost Apple only several dollars. If you want to learn more about this issue, go ahead and watch some more in-depth videos about this topic on MaxTech channel. Guys did an amazing job, I'll leave a link down below. So now I would say that the M2 Air will cost you at least $1400. Once again, I highly suggest do not pick up the 256 gigs base model. And you can find M1 MacBook Air for as low as $850-$900, brand new. And it's a huge price gap right now between those two. And I don't think that the extra 10-15% to of power and the redesign worth paying one and a half times more money. Speaking of performance, yes, M2 Air is faster in synthetic benchmarks and especially on the GPU side, but it's not revolutionary. It's nothing like when I was comparing my Intel MacBook Pro with Apple Silicon. That was a dramatic difference, but with M1 and M2 Air you'd hardly even notice the difference in the real world usage. I'm not even talking about M2 being a hotter chip and more aggressive thermal throttling than the M1 Air. So if you do own M1 already, I see absolutely no reason to upgrade to M2 Air. And if you are willing to spend $1400 on M2 Air, I would highly recommend to look at M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro, which you can now find on sale for as low as $1800, maybe $1850. I have a full video why it will be a much more cost effective purchase, the link is below. And finally, the colors. Starlight looks ok, but a bit boring and the mighty high P Midnight looks gorgeous until you touch it. After this, it's a complete mess of fingerprints and I guess no one wants to clean up a laptop with microfiber every half an hour. The only thing that really made me happy is color matching MagSafe cables. That's a nice touch. To conclude, of course, for most users, even the base M2 Air will be fine, even with the base model with up to two times slower SSD speeds, because most MacBook Air users just surf the net and work with documents and light productivity tasks. But how in the world is it possible for Apple to make this slow SSD in the most popular computer they sell in 2022? Steve Jobs, we screwed everything up. And we can't do it. We just can't ship junk. And by the way, I personally know a lot of video editors and photographers, basically professionals that work with base M1 Air and they would be surprised seeing that the new M2 might be much slower than M1 in their regular usage of one or two apps open and a couple of tabs in Chrome at the same time. Once again, it's only in terms of 256 base model with M2 MacBook Air. M2 Air is a weird machine to me, I have very mixed feelings about it and I'm more and more leaning towards the base M1 Air, considering a huge price gap, M1 Air is too good of a machine for its time and here is my prediction, M1 Air will still be selling better than the M2 Air. So what do you think of the new M2 Air and Apple's strategy with SSDs in the base configurations? Is there any excuse for such policy? Let me know in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as I see my videos and hit the notifications bell. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.